Hi everyone, it's me. So today we are doing a Scottish taste test video. I've got some Scottish food, some treats, but we also have Scotland's most infamous, most notorious alcoholic drink. And to be honest, I'm scared. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I've been living in the southeast of England for the last five years. I've done a bunch of taste test videos. I've tried wonderful things, I've tried terrible things, but to be honest, this particular drink is the one that worries me the most. So if that isn't enough to make you subscribe to my channel, how dare you? So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so first things first, I was actually gifted two types of Scottish tablet for Americans, Canadians, I mean, I don't think we have tablet unless you specifically go to like a British shop. But from my understanding, it's kind of like our equivalent of fudge. You know, it's just straight sugar. It's like, I need a sugar hit. What's the easiest way rather than just going into the cupboards and dumping the sugar directly into my mouth? How about this? I mean, it's 10 a.m. so why, why not, right? So this first one is Ross's Scottish Butter Tablet, quality product since 1880. Ross's of Edinburgh. I bet you this is gonna get up all in my teeth. Cheers. Oh my God. So that is a cube of sugar. It is buttery and it just sort of like flakes apart. It's almost like a chalky texture, but then it gets really creamy. I don't normally eat a lot of sugar. Um, that is going right into the bloodstream. Wow. Good thing I didn't want to do anything else today. Okay, so that was Ross's. Before we give um, a rating for Ross's Scottish butter tablet, this is Mrs. Tilly's, the famous Scottish Talbot. I wonder if there's any difference. Anyway, while I struggle to open this, I hope you guys are having a lovely day. Thank you for joining me here on this Scottish video. I got, I don't know if you can see my little Canada flag. It might, oh, that won't open. That's just, you know what that is, Scottish flag. While I live in England, I do have a lot of heritage that comes from Scotland. And I was kind of surprised we hadn't done a, a Scottish video till now. That's my bad, I'm sorry. All right, here we go. Wow, I'm gonna have a nap later, let me tell ya. Okay, here we go. Cheers to Mrs. Tilly's. Oh my God. All right, just a little bit more. Okay, so they are different, surprisingly. Ross's butter tablet is definitely buttery very sweet obviously it's 90 percent sugar mrs tilly's is more of like a creamy milky kind of tablet i think i like tilly's a little bit better just because this one is very very buttery so it feels like a little bit heavier um but let me tell you i can feel the sugar coursing through my body um i'm also a bit nervous about what we're about to eat later on um but otherwise wow <laughs> what am i even talking about ross's i'm gonna give three out of six thistles and Mrs. Tilly's I'm gonna give seven out of eight and a half tartan. Wow. I have so much left of this to eat. <laughs> you guys, wow. And next up on our journey through Scottish food, treats, and drinks, we have Iron Brew. Iron Brew. Can't do a Scottish accent, real sorry about that. Now, I actually taste tested Iron Brew years ago when I first moved to England and I didn't like it. <sighs> but it's been a long time and I thought if we're doing a video about Scotland, we have to include Iron Brew. It's a pop for people who aren't aware. There's a whole bunch of different flavors. Iron Brew in Scotland outsells Coke which I'm pretty sure Scotland is the only country that Iron Brew is the most popular soft drink and then Coke is second. So the Scots love it. Last time I tasted it, 
I cried a little bit. Also, it's bright orange. So it only seems right to try and pour it while I'm sitting on a light colored carpet. Okay, here we go. Easy does it. Gentle, gentle. I don't even think you can see this. I can't lift it up any higher, it's too heavy. Oh no. Cheers to all the Scots watching and to everybody else. Thank you so much for being here, cheers. I can already smell it. Bottoms up. Hoo wee, oh my, hello. That's the taste that I tried so hard to forget. Okay, so Iron Brew, to me, first thing that comes to mind, it tastes like liquid cotton candy. It is very sweet. You think orange, you think of, I don't know, like oranges. No, definitely not. If anything, this drink should be bright pink because that's what it tastes like. It tastes like pink, cotton candy, very sweet. My poor stomach. Cheers. Oh, I love the Scots, but I don't like this. I'm going to give Iron Brew two out of six disappointing drinks. It's just, it's not for me. Um, but I, I, I love you guys anyway. If you like Iron Brew, that's okay. Let's agree to disagree. Does anybody want the rest of mine? Let's just put that away for now. Next up, we have shortbread. Now, I went with the Patterson's Shortbread Fingers. Scottish Bakers since 1895. Best-selling shortbread, number one brand in Britain. And orangutan friendly. So that's good to know. Um, you might not be able to see, but this box actually has braille, which is really cool. I don't think you see this very often, if at all, in North America to have braille just straight on the box. I think it's wonderful. Why don't we do that more often? I don't know. Now shortbread is one of the treats that I love. I'm not really like a biscuit kind of person, cookie person. You know, they're fine. But there's something about shortbread that is so wonderful. Excuse me while I use my knee as a table. So I just destroyed that box. <laughs> Cheers to Scottish shortbread. You guys, that is so good. Just give me a second. I don't know about you, but I love shortbread. It's a little bit dry, but maybe if you had a, a, a nice coffee or a tea, I'd take a Yorkshire if you don't mind. A little bit of milk, please, no sugar. I just love shortbread. They're just wonderful. What would I give Patterson's shortbread fingers? A solid 10 out of 10 fingers on two hands. They're just, they're just good, you know? Would you ever reject a shortbread? I hope not. They're just wonderful. Hi, it's me. I'm just sitting over here for a second. If you've lasted this long in the video, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe. You know, it doesn't cost anything, but it really makes me feel good about myself and my self-worth. So it would be just wonderful if you could subscribe. Thanks so much. Next up, we have one of my favorite things. I'm so tired of eating things that I don't like. So we're gonna have some cider, but probably my all-time favorite cider, which just happens to be Scottish. So Thistley Cross, handmade in Scotland. It's my favorite cider. They have a bunch of different flavors. This particular one is their whiskey cask. It is matured in a Glen Moray whiskey cask. It's 6.7% alcohol. Um, it's so good. I've had this in the fridge forever, waiting for the perfect time to have it. And then I thought we should do a Scottish video. And I was like, yes, I got uh, one uh, cider in the fridge still. Now, Thistley Cast is kind of hard to come by down here in Kent. Some pubs have it, but very infrequently. I actually got this for Christmas. I had a, um, gifted a huge box of all different types of Thistley Cross. The whiskey cask is really nice. Their elderflower one is really good. Their just original um, Thistley Cross is super good. But it's, it's genuinely my favorite cider. 
and happens to be Scottish. So cheers. God, it's so good. Now when I got this for Christmas, it actually came with its own Thistly Cross little pint glass. Um, I just love it. The cider is so good. I do realize that it's like 1030 by now. But you know what? I gotta make a living somehow, right? So cheers to Thistly Cross. Have you ever had it? You really should. It's, it'll change your life. It changed my life. Wow, absolutely incredible. I'm gonna have a nap later. Did I say pint? This is a half pint. I don't know if I said pint glass. Sorry about that, half pint. Anyway, this Lee Cross, beautiful. I would rate this particular one, the, the whiskey cask, a solid eight out of eight casks full of Scottish cider. That was a mouthful, but I got through it. It's so good, I just, <sighs> I just love it. Now one of the Scottish treats that I have always wanted to try but I have never found one down here in Kent is a munchie box. So basically it is a big box. Sometimes they're even like pizza boxes and inside it's just filled with deep fried finger foods. So you might have like kebab meat, you might have mozzarella sticks, onion rings, crisps, chicken wings, pizza, deep fried pizza, just anything you can imagine that has cheese, calories, breading, meat, whatever, um, in this giant box. And they're called munchie boxes. They're quite popular in certain areas in Scotland. I want one. I want to try it so bad. But I guess I'll just have, I'll just have to stick to my giant iron brew for now, which I really don't want. Yum. And finally, we come to the star of the show, Scotland's most infamous alcoholic beverage. Did you guess it? It's gotta be Buckfast. Just a very quick, what is this and why are we so afraid of it lesson. So Buckfast tonic wine is actually English. It comes to us from Devon, so it is not Scottish, but it has quite the reputation in Scotland. So what makes it so infamous? It's not the cheapest. I think a bottle is what, like eight pounds? You can get cheaper alcohol than that. And it's also not the strongest. This is 15%. So why is it so deadly? Because it has caffeine. Yes, this tonic wine is a red wine based aperitif. However, it has high caffeine content. I read somewhere online that a big bottle like this has the amount of caffeine equivalent to like 10 cans of Coke, but it also has alcohol. I know. Now in America, the FDA has banned alcoholic drinks that have caffeine. So you're not supposed to be able to get this in the US because it's so bad for you. And I know some politicians in Scotland tried to get it banned as well, and it, it's not gonna happen. It, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. <sighs> so let's have a taste. Let's also pour this on my light colored carpet. Oh my God. <sighs> oh, I almost forgot I got this. Please take me seriously, I'm a professional. A viewer very kindly gifted this to me and also gifted me the Buckfast. I've always wanted to try it. I've never seen it down here in Kent. I'm sure it's gotta be down here somewhere. So I thought it would be only right to taste test Buckfast for the first time wearing this quite insensitive Scottish hat and hair combo. God, I'm nervous, stop putting it off. Okay, here we go, Buckfast, cheers. Alcohol and caffeine, what a perfect mix. Cheers. <laughs> Are you sure we need to do this? Yep, cheers, it's already poured. Just take a drink, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Cheers. Oh my.
I don't know what to say. It's not bad. What? It's actually not bad. It's not good. But it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. So basically it just tastes like a really thick, sugary, grape kind of flavor. And it really burns going down. And my heart is like, what's happening? I could really see why perhaps maybe young people might want to drink it because it, do it does not taste like alcohol, I'll tell you that much. It tastes like grape sugary juice, which I can, I can totally see why that could be quite dangerous, especially with the included caffeine. Oh my God. I was going to have a nap later. Now maybe I'll go run a marathon. I don't know. Let's take one more sip for the road. I'm going to give Buckfast a shocking four out of five English monks. It was made by monks, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Maybe it's too late in the video to bring that up now. This isn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be, but I'm sure it's going to hit me later. So I'm with that, I'm going to put this down and maybe I'm just going to have a little bit more of my cider because I, I know what's in that at least. God, that's so good. So today has been quite a learning experience. We've learned what tablet was. We've learned that I still don't like iron brew. We've learned my favorite cider happens to be Scottish. We've learned that I'll never turn down shortbread. And we've also learned that Buckfast, um, not as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, I do have the whole bottle left, maybe Maybe today, no, we're not gonna have, no, we'll put, it, we'll put it away for now. For any foreigners in the UK right now, make sure to try Buckfast before you leave because it very mel, very mel, it very well might be illegal in your country. <laughs> so cheers. All right, I guess I should go now. My head's starting to get really sweaty. I hope you guys like this video. Wow, what a, an experience it's been, eh? Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here. Thank you for putting up with this. I really appreciate it. And my stomach is starting to feel a little bit, a little bit funny. So maybe I should, I don't know, go have a piece of toast. To be honest, finding Scottish food down here in Kent was really difficult. Um, there are some websites where you can buy it online and it ships to you, obviously. I didn't do that because that takes a lot of forward planning. But it is tricky to find stuff down here in Kent. If you have a favorite Scottish food that you think I should try, please let me know and I'll do my best to try and find it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye!